Welcome to my guide to soloing Wintertime, brought to you by Unperished. Hello and welcome gamers, let's get right into it shall we? You may be asking yourself, what's the point of soloing? Well, soloing Wintertop provides many advantages. For instance, increased experience in extraneous skills such as construction and fletching, more loot on the way to 99 fire making due to increased point output, and it's more chill. <laughs> See what I did there? At least in my opinion. In order to solo Wintertop, there are two absolute necessities. You must have 50 fire making, and you must have completed Druidic Ritual to heal the Pyromancers. Although these are the only requirements, there are a few recommendations I have before you start. A steel axe or better, as anything above steel has the same chopping speed as steel. Your own POH to reap the glorious construction experience from repairing the braziers. 60 agility for run restoration, as well as the ability to use the agility shortcut in the north of the arena. A decent amount of food, and that can range anything from cakes to ceridome and brews, depending on your HP level, since Winter Tot does damage that scales on your HP, and four pieces of warm clothing, and I'll show you how to get four pieces quite easily. Even though having low HP helps preserve resources, don't be discouraged if you have high HP, as solos end up using less resources as well. Now let's grab the Clue Hunter outfit. Here is the cloak, just south of Yanil. Here are the boots and gloves that are found just northwest of the northern bank of East Ardoin. Here are the trousers, which are found north of Taibwo Wanai. And look out for these bears here, they are aggressive towards low levels and they can be quite deadly, but here is the garb. And if you want to go above and beyond, you can get the helm here, but you need one dose super anti, leather boots, and a nature rune. And there's the helm. I'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like all together, including my rainbow scarf here. I will say it's pretty fashionable. If you want to do a rainbow scarf rather than uh, another piece of warm clothing, I actually recommend it because it's only 120 coins from Diango here and it frees up a slot for either Graceful or Pyromancy outfit. And if you didn't know, the Pyromancy outfit gives you a 2.5% bonus to fire making experience. You can get to Winter Tot either by following this path north from the Great Karend Castle, or you can also use a games necklace to teleport right to the camp. When you're going this way, be wary of the wolves on the right here. They are deadly. So keep to the northwest, make your way to the bank, and you're here. Some basic tools can be found in the safe zone here, such as a bronze axe, knife, tinderbox, and hammer. Start off by taking five concoctions from the crate, and then running around and lighting all the braziers. Our goal is to keep all braziers lit until Winter Tot reaches 20% energy. Afterwards, maintain two braziers until energy reaches 10%. Then maintain Winter Tot at 5 to 10% energy until about 12,750 to 13,000 points. Then actively light at least one Brazier consistently to finally subdue Winter Tot. Before lighting the final Brazier, I like to pick five herbs to make potions to heal the Pyromancers for when they get downed, so that we can keep them alive and keep energy low on Winter Tot. When the player takes damage, some actions are interrupted. This includes feeding the brazier, fletching, and picking herbs. Attacks will damage the player for about 10-15% to of his or her HP, as long as the player is wearing warm clothing. Avoid the 3x3 tile blizzards targeted at you, and avoid standing next to the braziers when Winter Tot attacks it with a blizzard, for those will deal the most damage to you. Attack frequency is lessened when more braziers are lit, and direct attacks are lessened further when Winter Tot is low HP. Now I'd like to share some tips and tricks with you that I've learned along the way through my many hours at Winter Tot. The list on the screen is quite extensive, but I'm going to go over a few bullet points with you guys. Not only does Winter Tot damage you less frequently with low energy, but it seems that the boss attacks the brazier more frequently as well. This means more construction experience. If you're high HP and concerned about consuming too many resources, 
consider camping the safe zone after lighting all four braziers at the start. Winter Todd's energy will drop, but you will take a hit to experience rates. Try to complete two to three rounds at a time before banking with the extra potions ready to go for the next round. As shown above, the experience rates scale with the levels of their respective actions. Below are the experience rates per hour that I achieved through the solo and group method. Due to experience scaling by level, and actions mostly dependent on RNG, these rates may vary dramatically. At level 99 firemaking, I was getting about 280,000 experience per hour in solo, and 320,000 per hour in group. At level 90 woodcutting, I was getting about 13,000 experience per hour in solo, and 21,000 experience per hour in group. At level 90 fletching, I was getting about 20,000 experience per hour in solo, and did not fletch in group, as it is very detrimental to experience rates. At level 90 construction, I was getting about 17,000 experience per hour in solo, and 4,000 per hour in group. As you can see, fire making experience rates do take a hit in solo. I believe this is made up for by gaining more experience in the extraneous skills. On a different account, I did winter tot almost immediately, with only training construction to 10 before starting. By 99, I managed to achieve 66 woodcutting, 68 fletching, and 67 construction. If you're more concerned about efficiency, consider this. Construction is one of the most important skills for convenience. Leveling construction in tandem with fire making will allow you to take advantage of that convenience earlier, and without spending time collecting resources, and spending a small fortune to get there. In my opinion, this is the more efficient option, especially for Ironmen and other restricted account builds. Now that I'm about ready to finish up the round, let's discuss the fun part, rewards. The supply crates contain 2 to 28 loot rules, based upon the amount of points by the end of the round. After 500 points, you are provided a supply crate with two rolls. The odds of getting a third roll increase as your points approach the next 500 point milestone for another guaranteed roll. For instance, with 500 points, you get two rolls with a 0% chance of three rolls. At 625 points, you get two rolls plus a 25% chance of three rolls. At 750 points, you get two rolls plus a 50% chance of three rolls. And at 1,000 points, you get three rolls that are guaranteed. This means that you want to achieve 13,500 points to get a guaranteed 28 rolls per supply crate. The loot from supply crates is dependent on various skills. Seeds are dependent on your farming level, herbs on herb lore, raw fish on fishing, ores on mining, logs on woodcutting, and gems on crafting. Because of this, I recommend opening crates until full pyromancer and waiting until other skills are higher for the rest. For most rewards, waiting may not make much of a difference. In my opinion, the seed and herb rewards are substantially improved with higher levels in their respective skills, farming, and herb lore. There are nine unique rewards one may obtain from supply crates. Keep in mind that if you turn in a unique to Ignisia, you will get a supply crate with one roll that does not roll for a unique. As stated before, the Pyromancer outfit counts as warm clothing and provides 2.5% increased fire making experience when the full outfit is worn. The warm gloves do not count as part of the outfit. However, you should keep extra warm gloves and Bruma torches. Once you have three, the supply crate will instead roll for a magic seed and torstal seed, respectively. Thanks for taking the time to watch this guide. If you appreciate this content, please hit the like button below. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, corrections, or suggestions, please leave a comment below. Take care, and have a blessed day.